Hi, welcome to section 12.4. Um, we're going to talk about the cross product today, so let's jump right in. When we learned about other vector arithmetic, we drew pictures as often as we could, and then when we got to the dot product, because the uh, answer to a dot product is a scalar quantity, we couldn't really draw a picture, um, but it did involve the angle between the two vectors, so we're used to this picture here with the two blue vectors u and v and the angle between them. Uh, they lie in the same plane. In fact, any two intersecting lines would determine a unique plane. So we always draw u and v so that it appears that they're in the same plane um, because they can determine their own plane. And then we have this red vector right here, or pink, however it comes up on your screen. That is the cross product of u crossed with v. So we say just u cross v is how we say that. Um, and so this is the geometric representation of it. Notice that um, the pink vector, the product, is perpendicular to both u and v, which means it's perpendicular to this whole plane, and that's the primary feature of a um, cross product. We indicate ve little vector n here, okay, I'm going to tell you n is a unit vector, so n just gives the direction of the cross product, and then there is a scalar quantity that scales it to the proper length. So the use of a cross product is our 3D replacement for the concept of slope in two dimensions. So you could call it inclination. It tells us the inclination of the plane um, because this cross vector is perpendicular to that plane. So it kind of tells us which way that plane faces. All right. Notice the right hand rule of thumb is observed here. If your fingers curl from you in the direction of V, then your thumb is going to go the direction of the cross product if you use your right hand. Okay, so we've got a definition here, which we're going to skip over for a second because it involves the angle between them, and I want to do this without the angle between them first, but I want you to see that n is the direction of the cross product, and that the length of u times the length of v times the sine of theta, that's a scalar quantity, is part of the cross product. This is the part that determines how long it is, and you need to remember that n is always a unit vector, okay? So... Um, my hair is tickling my nose. So first thing I want you to think about is um, that if we have vectors that are non-zero vectors and they are parallel, um, then their cross product is going to be zero. Because if they're parallel, the angle between them is either zero or 180. Zero if they're both uh, pointed in the same direction and 180 if they're pointed in opposite directions. And the sine of 180 or the sine of zero would be zero. So you can t use their cross product as a test to see if they're parallel or not. Um, their product is the zero vector because it is a vector quantity um, even if it's zero. So my cat wants to get in on the action. Move, kitty. Okay. And so, of course, if we talk about a new operation, we have to talk about the properties. And you can't sit on my notes, baby. Sorry. She wants to be close, but there's no good place to sit. So um, if u and v and w are any vectors and r and s are scalar quantities, then all of these facts are true. So would you pause this and see if you can name these properties, if you recognize them, um, and then hit play. And you can check yourself um, in the textbook. These are listed on page 726, so see if you got them right. I'll save you time in the video here. Um, I am going to, might be a little strange, but I'm going to set a timer and try and keep these videos from being too long, and I'll break off um, when my little timer goes off and start another video for the rest of it. Okay, that's my cat standing on my tablet. Okay, so I wanted to bring this picture in here to let you know on um, the property where you reverse the order of the cross product that it negates the other order and that simply means that instead of going um, up from this plane that it would reverse the direction it would go down in the opposite direction so um, the commutative property has a negative in it so I gave that one away all right so here we go um, some standard notation we already learned what the standard unit vectors are um, that i is in the x direction and one unit long, and j is in the y direction and one unit long, and uh, k is in the z direction and one unit long. And so we want to define our basic cross products here. And this is a little memory trick for recalling um, these facts. So we get i cross j is k. 
and j cross k is i and k cross i is j and um, yes this is a nice little intermediate step because this is just the commutative property but I like this little memory trick better so if you draw doesn't matter where you put i okay but you go i j k and you draw the arrows in order going from i to j to k and back to i and this will tell you how they work so watch this i cross j is k there and now j j cross k is i and then k cross i is j so this is a nice little memory trick helping you recall the answers to your basic cross products of your standard unit vectors um, now anytime you cross a standard unit vector with itself remember they're parallel so their cross product is going to be zero okay so we're looking at some properties of the cross product before we get to this um, angle between them um, because I just threw a definition with an angle in there and didn't talk about it and we'll get to that but for now we're gonna play around and we're gonna talk about the magnitude of a cross product okay so um, that would be our definition here and instead of having n since it's magnitude it's the magnitude of n but n is a unit vector so its length is 1 and so the magnitude of a cross product is just the scalar quantity in the cross product formula and turns out that this is the area of a parallelogram and the proof is really short so the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height and we've got the base u the length of u magnitude the height would be the vector v times the sine of theta so we get the vertical component gives you the height of the parallelogram and this is simply the magnitude of u cross v. Notice how there's no n out here, so this is a scalar quantity, magnitude, and conveniently it is the area of the parallelogram defined by vectors u and v. Lots of geom geometric properties here for the cross product. So um, we want to derive a formula for calculating. We did the geometric definition, uh, and it involves the angle between the vectors. The algebraic definition does not involve the angle between them, so they don't have to hand you that uh, that fact. They can simply give you two vectors and their components. But again, in space, so we have a k component. And if you're not given a k component, then you should insert a zero. All right. So this is going to be distribution. So when we put our vectors in ijk form here and take the cross product, we're simply distributing u1 times v1 times i times i. Well, i times i um, is the zero vector. Okay. And then, so this is really long, three terms times three terms gives us nine terms. And so anything with a uh, vector crossed by itself, you know, then u1 times v2 and i times j, that's this one. So we're going through, and to simplify, after we do all this distribution, distribute each one of these to each one of these and get our nine terms, anything that has a unit vector times itself is going to be zero. That's going to fall out. Then... Um, i cross j is the opposite of j cross i so when we put these together in factored form with i out here the negative one okay so um, if you get okay so here's how you think it through i cross j is k and j cross i is going to be negative k so these two components are over here and the negative one is the one that has j in front of i that reverses the order of the first one um, so you can see where the k term comes from and then maybe with some color here um, if we cross i cross k is going to be j so this winds up in the j uh, parentheses in the factor form and then we need k cross i down here that's flipped so it's the opposite so there's the source of our negative sign with u3 v1 and then that takes care of those two and then we have k cross j that's going to be i um, k j cross k so these are opposites so they put the negative sign on the second one here and brought down the first one here so we get this formula and it is long and hard to remember and so we won't have to memorize this okay there's a trick to do this it's called a determinant and if you've studied any linear algebra matrices um, this might be familiar um, so a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers and um, we're interested in an operation that you can do on a matrix called a determinant 
and it's a calculation that tells you something about your matrix. Um, and we're going to be doing um, three by three determinants because we're working in three space. Um, so linear algebra deals with matrices of all sizes. Um, we could do this with a two by two if we were limiting our vectors to two dimensional space. Um, but the formula is simpler for those. We're going to be dealing in space, so I'm just going to ask you to, to learn about determinants uh, for three by three matrices. So, um, by the way, if you're taking the SAT math test, math, the SAT 2 test for math, the second level one, you need to know how to do this. So, um, if you've not studied matrices and you're due to take that test, please uh, make sure you come talk to me um, or send me a message. And I'll tell you where you can get some uh, resources to study that. All right, so example one in the book shows you a very formal method for determining, um, for, for calculating a determinant. And that's great. I'll show it to you in a moment, but I have a shortcut method. Okay, so here's my IJK, and this is part of my definition right here for the calculation. Two, three, four would be the components of my U vector and five, six, seven would be the components of my V vector. And here's how I'm gonna teach you to do this really obnoxious formula without having to memorize the formula. Because I certainly have not memorized the formula and there's no need. So I'm going to copy over that first column and the second column. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take the products, if I can do this well, the product of the items on these diagonals. So each diagonal, I'll take a product. I times three times seven is 21I. And J times four times five is 20J. Please pay attention to signs if you have any negative numbers. And K times two times six is 12K. And these are all my you know, standard unit vectors. I'm gonna put little hats on the, the unit vectors. And then I'm going to do the same thing going the other direction. So for these three vectors, or excuse me, these three products on these diagonals, um, K times three times five is 15 K. Still gonna put them in the proper order. I times four times six is 24 I. And uh, J times two times seven is 14 J. And now I need to clean this up. So this gets your right two components times the proper standard unit vector in the right order. And notice I didn't have to use a formula at all. What I've got is 21 I minus 24 I, or negative three I. 20 J minus 14 J is six J. And 12K minus 15K or minus 3K. So this is the vector product or the cross product of the vector 3, 4, 5 with the vector 5, 6, 7. And that's the simple way to do it without memorizing a formula. Um, so you can practice here. Um, and if you want to pause it and do that, I'm going to do it on the screen real quick. I'm going to do this one. And then remember there's a shortcut for this one, okay? Um, so pause now if you don't wanna watch now. Okay, so setting this up, we're gonna put I, J, and K. I won't penalize you for not putting the little hats. It's just um, how I was taught. So it feels funny if I don't. Two is the coefficient of I and my U vector. There's U, one and one. And over here for my V vector, negative four, three, one. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat those same columns, just the first two. And J, one, three. So here we go. On this diagonal, I've got one I. On this diagonal, I've got negative four J. And on this diagonal, I've got 6K. All right. On this diagonal, I've got negative 4K. On this diagonal, I've got 3I. And on this diagonal, I've got 2J. 
and combining them, I've got 1 minus 3. It's negative 2i. Remember, this is a minus. Uh, negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6j. And 6 minus negative 4 is 10k. And that is u cross v. Now, for v cross u, you can calculate it by hand, or you can simply remember that it's the opposite of u cross v. So the opposite of this vector, opposite of negative is positive. Opposite of negative 6, positive 6. Opposite of positive 10, oops, I was saying it, so I wrote it, is negative 10. So don't let the second one be long for you and have to redo this. Do this uh, calculation as infrequently as you can get away with. OK, so expansion by minors is a way to define taking the determinant of any square matrix. Um, Non-square matrices don't have determinants, so they're special when they're square. And I'm going to explain this really quickly. And you, if you like this, you can choose to do it this way. Um, so when we're going to do the i component of your final answer, we're going to mark out the row and column of that i component and use a minor determinant. So this is called the minor, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1. And the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, OK, super simple formula for this one, a, B, C, D. The determinant is A times D, that's the product of items on a diagonal, minus B times C, so minus the product of the items on the other diagonal. And with a 2 by 2, there's only one diagonal in this direction and one in that direction, so this is a really simple formula. 1 times 1 minus 3 times 1 is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. Then for J, Okay, we mark out the row that J is in and the column that J is in. Oh well, so much for changing colors. And we get 2, negative 4 over here. We get 1, 1 here, and that's our term. And then this is minus, okay, because there is a change of sign in the cross product formula. This accounts for negating the proper terms. So we do 2 times 1 is 2, minus negative 4 times 1 minus negative 4 is 6, and then we subtract that. So there's our negative 6. And then finally, we cross out the k row and column, and there's our minor determinant over here. And when we calculate that, 2 times 3 is 6, minus negative 4 is plus, and this one is plus, so the only one that's negative is the middle one. And 6 plus 4 is 10k. So if you like expansion by minors better, please go for it. Um, either way is absolutely fine. However, um, I don't want you to just go from the statement of the determinant to a final answer. Um, I would like to see a little bit of work in the middle.